Welcome to Preserving Your History at PSVL. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we'll be talking about how to preserve your documents and books. Some examples of things you might consider preserving include letters, recipe cards, address books, newspapers, and newspaper clippings. For the bulk of my documents, I tend to put them in plastic sleeves and then put into file folders. For example, this is a recital that my grandmother was in in December of 1947. I have my plastic sleeve and then I tend to group my documents by, by family. So this would be my born family folder. Now newspapers on the other hand ad require additional protection and care. For instance, I have a newspaper here from 1942. Now while it is tempting to keep it folded like this, it actually can cause damage over time. So if you can see where it's starting to crack where the image is. So instead of laying it like that, you want to keep it as unfolded as possible and lay it and keep it as flat as possible as well. If you have a recent newspaper, you could consider laminating it. For instance, in 2000, when my parents got this article about me, they decided to laminate it. Now, I wouldn't have put it on construction paper <laughs> and because, you know, there could have been something interesting on the back. You never know. I would not consider putting a older newspaper into a laminating machine as it could tear and rip. For newspaper clippings, I recommend writing down where you got the clipping from. So for example, this is my mother's engagement announcement. Now I happen to know when my mother got engaged, but if someone were to pick this up, they'd be like, where, when did this happen? There's no year on this document. So what I recommend you do for future genealogists in your family is to write down the name of the newspaper, where the newspaper is located, as newspapers sometimes have the same name across the country, the date of the newspaper, and the page number. You'll be doing your future genealogists a favor because they won't have to look through pages and pages of microfilm looking for this particular article. Now for books. This is not a great example <laughs> of what I would consider a safe place for your books. A cardboard box isn't much protection, so I truly recommend getting an archival box as they are sturdier and they are much more able to protect your items. But in a pinch, a cardboard box will do, but I recommend finding one that is to the shape as much as possible for your book item. So for example, this book, there's enough space that I can lift the book out gently, but not enough space that it's going to move around a lot. So you don't want this big box for a little book. Otherwise, it's going to move all around and can cause further damage to your books. And as always, Keep it as flat as possible. Gravity is not good for the spines. And you can also use your picture box you potentially made last week to store your file documents and your books. Now for digitalization. At the library, we have two scanners that you can use to digitize your newspaper clippings and newspapers and other fun things. I hope you've enjoyed this segment of Preserving Your History at PSBL. Share some of your favorite family documents. We love to hear it. Come back next week when we talk about how to preserve your family home videos. Have a great day!